All right, thank you. Edward wants to come back for two quick points, then open for discussion. Um, yes, just very quickly on this China comparison. It's not really an accurate one because the Soviet Union of 1991 was in a state where the, the economy was already wrecked by the failure to reform properly in the previous 15 years. If you'd had a Soviet Deng Xiaoping starting reform in 1976 or even better in 1966, then you might be able to have a fair comparison between Chinese and um, Russian stroke Soviet developments. But the state of disaster that was um, in, in 1991, I think beggars description, I was living in the Soviet Union at the time, um, um, as it um, soon ceased to be. And I'm not sure there was any, I mean, the, big, the big priority was to try and get some kind of um, food and goods back in the shops and stop people starving because the um, plant economy had broken down so badly. So that's um, just, just one, one quick point on that. Um, and I just want to endorse this sort of point that Owen made and, and actually amplify it because I think it's really not just corruption, it's actually criminality. It makes much more sense to look at the regime in Russia as a kind of criminal syndicate rather than a proper government. And I think trying to analyze their political philosophy maybe it makes as little sense as trying to analyze the political philosophy of the Cosinostra. <laughs> uh, all right, very quickly. Um, very, very quickly, if it's possible. On the, on the China point, very quickly, I mean, the standard of living in China when uh, Deng Xiaoping came to power, you know, there's a fraction of that in Russia in 1991, in the Soviet Union in 1991. Um, the big difference between the, the, the two countries is, is one was a, a kind of deliberate, uh, innovative, perpetual set of uh, experiments, and the other was, was, was shock therapy, and that's why one worked, and the other was, I, th I think, uh, disastrous. But, but more importantly than that, I mean, my point about, the, about understanding Putin's Russia and the Putin system, absolutely not to condone it. I think it's... Uh, it's uh, an absolutely, uh, you know, it's a, it's, a total, it's a big threat to everything that I believe in, and in all the way, all the advances that have been made in Europe over the last 50 years in terms of moving away from spheres of influence, promoting equal democracy, etc. But I think in order to deal with it, we need to be realistic about it, and we need to understand it. And I think some of the things that we see as problems for the system are in fact the system, that is my point. So this whole idea of a feudal system um, is actually based on informal links, on corruption, on all the sorts of things which we don't understand as actually making... Uh, they, they, these are things which enhance the system and are, allow it to work rather than problems and flaws in the system. Okay. And we need to, to, to well, completely well, change the way that we look at it to understand why it actually carries on surviving. Well, I don't well, it breaks well, many of the rules so that have to go to work. Who's there? Who's first? Say where you are and say if you want someone particularly to address. No one is right. But the question is, uh, the current financial crisis is affecting Russia as much as anybody else. Uh, do you think the regime will survive because they have they can't control it and they would like? Since you're on the ground. Yes, I, I, have a, I have a very simple answer to that, and it's also a riposte to 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 to, to, to Mark's last point. Uh, and, and, and the uh, and and the the, the, the book is containing one word oil, and that is that actually the the, the incredible leaky ridiculously corrupt nature of the Russian system was 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 uh, covered up by the fact that there was so much money, free money pouring out the ground. And I think the problem is that the, with, the, with, with the, the the system is entirely built on spending free money. So who just as who can travel as just as 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 I might in 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 Iran, populist rulers spending money are popular. Uh, th therefore, uh, how, how do they manage when they, when they stop spending money? Luckily for them, they've actually got, uh, we're sensible enough to sort away a little bit of money, and they're actually going to be okay for the next couple of years, thanks to the, to the uh, prudence of, of Alexei Kudin, the finance minister. So actually, they, they have left themselves a bit of a buffer, so we're not looking at the 1998 situation where everything just sort of goes, uh, sort of, it, it goes down the rabbit hole um, it, but overnight. But um, so I, I, th I think that the, there's going to be a very profound shock to the system as uh, the, the, the profound dysfunction of Putinomics and favoring gigantic state-owned corporations over the private sector is, it starts to unravel very obviously under all Russian eyes. Alex? Yeah, <coughs> I think the, calling the government a criminal syndicate 
I mean, all governments are, in some sense, it's criminal syndicates, but they're in charge of large states. And uh, we all know that we have many criminal syndicates working here who fail. Um, the thing is, they're very worried, given the economic crisis, excessively worried. This is one interesting thing about the Russian regime, as it was in the Soviet days as well. Excessively worried about very small protests leading to large booms of some sort, of uprisings of some Anyway, they're very nervous. So the economic crisis made them think very hard about the corrupt system which depends on loyalism rather than talent, and that's why the debates really got underway within the elite. It's not a matter of the opposition raising problems. It's the elite worrying about the capacity of the system to withstand economic difficulties and social unrest. And for that reason, I think, they're open to, not liberalism, but liberalization and easing. It's for purely practical reasons. So it's, if it's a criminal syndicate, and I don't think it has an interest in making Russia great as well. It's a, it's a syndicate with a purpose if not necessarily a strategy and a philosophy. Uh, I think it should be taken in very different contexts from, from uh, Matthew Dean. Um, I also think, I mean, if you look at the way the crisis has, has uh, erupted so far, it both uh, started this internal debate, which people talked about, led by people like Kudrin and the kind of liberal, well, so-called liberal economists within the, within the elite. But actually on the ground, it's working out in, in, in the opposite way. It's not the private sector and the market which is being strengthened. It's in fact this corrupt state system which is just working So they're finding enemies of the people. Um, uh, it's independent business people who are having their, their assets taken away from them so they can be redistributed and sucked into the system. There are over 100 mayors, independent mayors, who aren't part of the Putin system, who have been put in prison over the last year. Um, so what's happening is, is that... Uh, Paradoxically, it's not the free market and the liberal and the modernizing bits which have been strengthened in the first stage of the crisis. It's in fact the non-Putin uh, bits of the system which are being uh, crowded out. And the hardliners, uh, uh, actually what they see is state capitalism expanding. They see a return to kind of 1990s you know, food vouchers and other sorts of things. Um, uh, it's the exact opposite of what we think will happen and what we want to happen could very well be the, the result of this crisis. And the Russians, Pavlovsky actually talks in biblical terms, he says after seven fat years, we're now looking at seven lean years ahead of us, and they're starting to think about how they can adjust their political system to soak up all of the different points of discontent so that they're within the system, and there's no space for opposition parties to develop. And I don't think it's any coincidence that there haven't been any opposition parties uh, developing beforehand. It's because the way the system is designed is in fact to operate what to, to, to uh, soak up every single bit of the political space and to occupy it from the streets where they set up fake NGOs and have fake protesters to the political system where they control all the main parties and, and it, it, the system has worked so far I'm not sure it will work forever nothing lasts forever and this is going to test it uh, in the most brutal and severe way possible